Hello, my name is Thomas Dupricke and I like Node-RED and that's the reason why I created that Flow Twitter follower. When I support in hackathons, I recently get three major questions. Is how to build my own REST API inside Node-RED to encapsulate the request for other APIs. In this case, it will be the Twitter API, you can, you can guess. And the next is how to authenticate to these other encapsulated REST APIs. And how do I extract the data from the endpoint and use it inside my flow and how to automate all of that in one flow. So all these topics are addressed in this flow. And the flow itself is related to a um, blog post you can find in the description also with a GitHub project. Everything you see here, you can instantiate by yourself for free with no additional cost. There is no cost for the Twitter API. You can use it for free. You have to register. You have to define an own Twitter application, why you do it, and then you get the access to the Twitter API. And you can instantiate for free the node red here on IBM Cloud so that you can use it here as I use it here in my sample. So let us start with a sample execution of the Twitter follower flow. The flow can be started with the inject node here, you can see, and I have enabled two debug nodes. The one is for all data. We will see the return values of the followers and we see a result list at the end I built from my own. So, we will see all the information here in the debug window. Let us start. It starts and you can see here, right, requests, 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 and there were five, huh, five pages of the followers because we cannot get all follower in one row. There is a limit size to get follower list and I shrinked it to uh, 50, the maximum is uh, 200. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five pages. And the final result of the list is 246 followers, yeah? and I add some additional information, and that's my new follower list I can use. Okay, this was a short overview how it works. So let's start with the implementation of the REST endpoint or the REST API inside Node-RED. For that, we need a HTTP in node and an HTTP response node. Everything between is implementing the logic of the input we get and the response we send. I will execute the get token endpoint in my browser. You can see here that's the host address of my Node-RED instance and that's the name, the path to the get, uh, get token endpoint in my Node-RED flow when I execute it can see I get the information, error, unknown user. And that's the result of the flow because when the invocation is done, I verify the message object, which is given from here. Inside this function, a function is a possibility to implement with JavaScript own logic. So I verify here the, the user. I use a flow variable to load the information, a flow variable is a global variable which exists in a flow. Yeah, Because when we define variables inside a function, they only exist during the execution of the function. But I want to use these globally in different situations, and that's the reason why I use here this flow variable. The next is uh, 
in our situation, I validate it and I return the value of null if it is wrong. And as you can see, the switch node validates. And I validate the information and if it's wrong, yeah, I've, then I provide the information in the payload in that format. And this is exactly what we got here from the response. This is the first way. The successful way is when we invoke it, we have the right user and password, and then I will provide the authorization, the first step of the two-level authentication for the Twitter API. I will get my authentication string from here, also from a flow variable. And I send the information to a request node, HTTP request node. Here we do the concrete invocation of the Twitter API, and that's the encapsulation. Yeah, so we have our own REST endpoint, and we call the external REST endpoint inside this HTTP request node. We have prepared the HTTP information to provide the validation. And if the validation is right, uh, right we get a response, and we just do forward the response with our own implementation of this endpoint. With that, let us get to the automation of the authentication, two-level authentication for the Twitter API with the first step getting uh, uh, using the key and secret to get a Bira token and then auto uh, authenticate with that Bira token at the Twitter API to get the followers itself validate uh, when we reach the end of the follower list and build an own follower list. So that's what you have seen at the beginning of the video. The first is I set in this function the credential information from Twitter and I insert the protection information from my own endpoints. I will convert the Twitter secret information and key information to a base64 encoded string. I save that string here. You can see I set this in a flow variable. And then I will use the information in this request. You know the request yeah, is to encapsulate the request to endpoints. So, and I do start the endpoint of the flow itself. That's the flow here. And the parameters are given and I get as a result, a JSON object. Oh, I would say not a JSON object. The first is a string. Then I create a JSON object to make it more concrete. And when I get the JSON object, I will extract the information of the access token and set it to a flow variable. In the next function, I set the parameters for the invocation of the REST endpoint of the get followers. What are the parameters? The parameter is here the cursor information you can see here. Uh, the cursor, the next cursor, can open up. So here, the cursor information here is a number. It's uh, important to know when we go into the paging where the Twitter API starts for the next amount of users we want to get as a result in a response. The count I defined with 50. And this is the name I searching for for the followers. Okay, and with this, we are ready to go to 
invoke our own endpoint. We have here the parameter. Here you can see I use from the function and these are the query parameters directly for the for the invocation of the REST API we defined here in the node. This will give us a result, and that's the result I monitored here with this debug node. And then I built here the follower list. The follower list um, has following tricky thing a little bit because we do this paging and we have to save the data we get in a flow variable. And when we get the result of the current page, we must push the information we want to get out from the user into our own list and we save this list so that we can access uh, the list with the new information. After that, we verify, do we have reached the end of the pages? So you know there was the cursor information and you can see here the next cursor string here is null and also the cursor position is null, so that means at this moment we do move to the end, otherwise we move on and we do the same request until we uh, reach the null. And when we reach the end, yeah, we get the follower list, we do some manipulation for the JSON format so that we first have the data, then we create additional uh, variable for Twitter followers so that you can see when I build all this stuff, it's here data, then Twitter followers, and that's the reason why I get this object format later on. And I also add um, the date, time. Yeah, once again, I let it ex execute with the entire flow. Yeah, so let us execute here and watch the flow flashes when the invocation happens. So I will execute it and then you can see here there was and you can see here uh, hope. Yeah it's good to see. So this was a more in-depth introduction to the Twitter follower flow. I hope this was useful for you. And as I said, I like Node-RED. It is a perfect mixture between visualizing flows and do some coding. And let's see what next. Don't forget, keep your hands dirty. Go into the description, check out the blog post and the GitHub project. All you have to invest is time. <laughs> <laughs>